Breaking news story, Shoshaloza Mail has confirmed that 15 people are still missing following last week's train crash in the Free State. 19 people died in the crash and dozens were injured. Families will continue identifying bodies at a mortuary in Kruinstad today, which was closed over the weekend. Rail Agency Prasa says it will meet with families today. ENCA's Michael Apple is tracking the story for us. He joins us now live. Uh, Michael, you've managed to speak to police for an update. What are they telling you? Shahan, that's right. I've spoken to Lieutenant Colonel Tandi Mbombo from the, uh, the Free State SAPS, and she's confirmed that that fatality figure remains at 19 for the moment, but a forensic process is still underway. She's confirmed that there are body parts there are limbs um, of the passengers uh, that uh, are still unidentified here in the morgue at Kronstadt. So after that uh, 10 a.m. meeting with, uh, between the families and the passenger rail agency is over, some of those families I know will be coming to Kronstadt uh, to come and see either if those limbs uh, are part of existing bodies have, that have been identified or if those limbs are potentially uh, I, able to be identified by some of the families uh, who have uh, said there are still 15 people outstanding that are unaccounted for that haven't as yet been identified. Uh, Colonel uh, Mbombo did tell me though that it is an arduous process to uh, find out who is where exactly because you have those that were discharged from hospital you have those that are amongst the dead that have been identified, those that are missing. And then there are 13 train stations between Port Elizabeth and where the accident took place. There were over 700 people on board. The passenger manifest list should be able to confirm who was getting on, who was getting off. Uh, but it's all about uh, reconciling all the names and the figures now. Uh, for the rail agency. So she said it's a quite a complicated process to find out who was on board at that moment. So they want to make sure that from those, pa those families that say those people are missing, their loved ones are missing, that they didn't somehow get off on one, at one of those tray stations at the 13 uh, along the way before that, uh, that tragic accident, Sean. And Michael, of course, officials last week saying that families could actually uh, challenge the uh, driver, the truck driver, legally, but families are actually now targeting Prasa as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be a war on two fronts, uh, both for the truck company and uh, that, of course, we know the driver has been charged with culpable homicide um, and uh, for the rail agency itself uh, claims last week from some of the passengers that there was overloading and some of the emergency procedures uh, it seemed chaotic at the time of that accident uh, saying that passengers were helping passengers and claiming that it was Shoshaloza male staff that grabbed their personal belongings and, and tried to get off the train uh, leaving passengers unattended. So those are the claims, the allegations made against the rail agency that they'll have to defend when it comes to uh, civil suits that are likely pending against them. Now, I see some people sitting behind you on a bench. Families were not happy that they couldn't access the mortuary uh, this weekend. How is this identification process going to work today? Well, I think, uh, look, this, uh, the people that are here behind me, they're not necessarily here for, uh, for the identifying uh, process. All those families that have as yet not been able to identify or know where their family members are, they're sitting at a meeting uh, in Johannesburg at Prasa House at the moment. They're, well, some of them will be coming through a little bit later on to try and come and identify some of the limbs, some of the body parts, and, and see if it uh, belongs to their loved one. Uh, so how exactly the entire process is going to work is outside of our control. It's beyond where we can go. Um, but it must be said, it is probably the most difficult thing any parent or mother or father has to do in their life. And Michael, of course, have you managed to speak to any of those families uh, who are still looking for their loved ones, families who are still waiting to identify the victims of this crash? I mean, what's going through their minds right now? It's, of course, an incredibly difficult time. Yeah, I, I think the wait over the weekend when the morgue uh, was closed uh, it would have been such a difficult time. And, uh, and this morning we spoke to Masabata Ranyane, who's the mother of a nine-year-old girl. Uh, I was with them on, on Saturday with the mother and the father. And um, the mother just said, we just, we just want to know. I think they, the, the, 
just to get some sense of closure. I think it's the not knowing that's, that's the worst part. Uh, but it's been five days now since that accident, so I think perhaps it, it has set in that if she hasn't made contact by now, then, then she potentially has to be amongst the dead. All right, thanks for that. Appreciate it. ENCA reporter Michael Apple is in Kruenstad.